This episode starts with the main six taking a ride to Canterlot. They're all excited, and quite honestly, I don't know why. They're all going to be acting in a play. I'm sure it's an honorable feat, but they seem a little too enthusiastic. Especially Fluttershy, who has stage fright, which doesn't come up once after the episode begins. Okay, who wrote this episode? Meriwether Williams? This'll be fun. Speaking of that stage fright thing, they spend the first minute of the episode building it up. It really makes me think that that would have been the main conflict of the episode, but it's not. In fact, there isn't really an overarching conflict in this episode. A window opens, and the main six begin fighting over pretty much everything. Really spontaneously, actually. And that's how you know it's a Meriwether Williams episode. I didn't say anything about her in my top five writers list because she's not bad enough for me to kick her to the curb, but she isn't good enough to be, well, one of my favorites. By the way, reuse soundbite, again. Here's what I know about Meriwether's writing style. She likes to write assholes. No, really, that pretty much sums up every single Meriwether Williams episode. Unlike Charlotte Fullerton's main gimmick, bending the plot to a contrived outcome, assholes have a place. The problem is that she frequently makes the main six assholes when they're not, usually. It's not too much of a problem in this episode, though. The fighting only takes place in the first couple of minutes, and for the rest of the episode is the hearthswarming play. They call it a pageant, but it's not a pageant. Ah, yes, the play. We're going to learn about the founding of Equestria, which apparently happened long before Celestia and Luna. I'm going to ignore established continuity until the end, or we'll be here all day. A long, long time ago, ponies didn't know harmony, and each of the three tribes lived in separation. The Pegasi controlled the weather like they do now, the Earth ponies grew the food, and the unicorns controlled the day and the night cycle. So they had a system. The Earth ponies grew everyone's food, and in return, the Pegasi didn't send a tornado to kill them, and the unicorns didn't keep it daytime forever to scorch everyone to a crisp. At least, that's how I assume it happened. One day, a mysterious blizzard came and covered the land. With it, the Earth ponies couldn't grow any food. For some reason, the Pegasi couldn't do anything with the storm, and the unicorns couldn't control their magic. So the three tribes turned on each other, and the more hatred that spread, the worse the blizzard got. It was eventually decided that a grand summit would be held, and the leaders of each of the three tribes would be sent. Sort of. Rarity plays Princess Platinum, daughter of the Unicorn King, which according to this means that Prince Princess is a higher rank than King. Rambo Dash plays Commander Hurricane and Pinkie Pie plays Chancellor Puddinghead. They immediately get to fighting. The Earth Ponies are hogging whatever food they can because they blame the Pegasi for freezing everything. Or as she puts it, The Pegasi blame the Unicorns, thinking that they're using their magic to make the blizzard. And the rest of the scene is just arguing. Well, that and a little bit of racism. The three leaders return home to complain. Rainbow Dash tells Fluttershy that they're going to find a new home. Yeah, I know they were given in-play names, but it's just easier to call them who they are, and who they are acting like. Except Commander Hurricane might possibly be a dude. Rarity comes to the same conclusion, telling Twilight they will also be seeking a new home. And Pinkie Pie talks to Applejack. Does anyone else find it strange that those two have had very little interaction up to this point? I think it would happen more often with Applejack playing the straight mare to Pinkie's zaniness. I will give Meriwether that. If there's one thing about her episodes I like, is that she puts together characters that don't see much interaction. Granted, it doesn't always work, but it's something. Pinky decides to leave as well. So there's a journey where the leaders basically insult their underlings. Rainbow Dash is incredibly brash, Rarity is constantly whining, and Pinkie Pie is too scatterbrained. This just became the strangest play I've ever watched. Normally in plays like this, we try to glorify our founders and leaders. I guess things work differently in Equestria. Either that or Celestia wrote the play to make things look horrible before a rain, but we all know that that could never happen. All three types of ponies find their perfect location and dub them Pegasopolis, Unicornia, and, um, Earth, respectively. Why do people find that surprising? They are Earth ponies, after all. But, surprise, surprise. But the land they've all chosen is the same place. As, as soon as they figure this out, the fighting starts again, almost immediately. The underlings try to con their leaders, but they'll have none of it, and the blizzard starts again. This time, it's courtesy of Crazy Horse Ghosts. I'll give this play one thing. It has the best damn theater effects I've ever seen. The snow forces every pony into a cold and desolate cave. And there's some more fighting. This actually doesn't upset me. One, because it's not out of character, and two, because it eventually has them fighting over a rock. That's how you do it. Oh yeah, it doesn't last forever either. Eventually the cave starts freezing, and so do the leaders. The underlings bump into each other, and Twilight identifies the ghosts as Wendigos, creatures that feed off fighting and hatred. The underlings realize that they don't really hate each other, and they reconcile, and Twilight uses her freaky unicorn magic to shatter the ice. Throughout the night, the three tribes get to know each other, and in the morning they raise a flag with two alicorns. Wait, what? Oh yeah, this episode ends with a song. It's pretty much a Christmas carol. Then there's a perfect bookend to a not-so-perfect episode. This is probably Meriwether Williams' best season 2 effort, and yet I'm only giving it three stars. Haven't given one of these in a while. Why? Well, let's start with the obvious continuity errors. This episode battles against a lot of the established lore, and the flag at the end does raise some questions, especially since Spike specifically states that this play takes place before Celestia and Luna. But honestly, they don't bother me for one reason. This is a play. 
I'd be a lot more surprised if it wasn't at least a little romanticized, especially if the writer of the play was trying to make the before times look bad. Also, there were children in the audience. Make of that what you will. No, my problems stem from the beginning and the ending, where the main six practically turn on each other at the drop of a hat. If it didn't make any sense at the beginning, it definitely doesn't make any sense at the end, considering that they just finished a play about the importance of friendship. And the play itself does have a sense of being contrived, with the main six essentially playing flanderized versions of not only themselves, but the stereotypes of their respective race. Otherwise, it's a fun watch, and I'll probably view it again come Christmas time. There's some semblance of heart there, and I definitely did laugh, but there aren't enough good parts to hide the flaws. Speaking of which, if there's something I wish this episode did, it's tell us how they actually celebrate Hearthswarming Eve. From the decor, I can assume it's like Christmas, but the Eve at the end does confuse me slightly. 